write down the system of linear equations corresponding to the augmented matrix A, which is equal to this matrix here. Find the elementary row operation that transfers A into B, and then find the inverse elementary row operation that transfers B into A, where B is one of these three options. Well, first, let's do the first part of the question, write down the system of linear equations corresponding to that augmented matrix. What does augmented mean? Well, if I look that up, it means ah, it means that my matrix is made by putting two, bit, two matrices together. And if it's corresponding to a system of linear equations, that would mean that this part here is the coefficients of my variables. And this part here is the answers, the, the numbers on the other side of the equal sign. So I've just put a bar in my matrix to remind me that it's augmented. It's made of two separate pieces. And all I need to do is uh, write the variables in instead of just having the numbers. So I'm going to choose my variables to be x, y, and z. That seems reasonable to me. I could just as easily choose them to be x1, x2, and x3. That's traditional as well. You could choose them to be any letters you want, a, b, and c if you wanted. But I think x, y, and z are the best ones for the moment. So 3x minus 8z plus, oh, sorry, <laughs> minus 8y. plus 11z is equal to 0. That's the first row. The second row is minus 1x, so just minus x, plus 0y plus 8z is equal to uh, 1. one. And the next row would be 2x minus 8y plus 4z is equal to 10. So that's the system of linear equations that this augmetric and augmented matrix corresponds to. Now let's do part A. We want to find an elementary row operation that transfers my matrix A into my matrix B. So we'll need a new page to do that. So let's see, my matrix A, 3, minus 8, 11, 0, minus 1, 0, 8, 1, 2, minus 8, 4, 10. And traditionally when you're doing row operations on an augmented matrix, you write it like this, and the matrix that it becomes after the first row operation would go underneath here. So it becomes the matrix B, which was 3, minus 8, 11, 0, minus 1, 0, 8, 1, and 1, minus 4, 2, 5. Before I do any more, I should remind myself of what's possible with row operations. So, as far as I remember, there's three possible row operations, and I'll just write down some examples to help remind myself what they look like. So, the first possible row operation would be to multiply a whole row by something. So, that would be something along the lines of, like, 3 row 1. And so, um, most people write that as, like, something like this. Row 1 becomes 3 row 1. Or, possibly, they write row 1 is equal to 3 of row 1. I like to remind myself that I'm making a whole new row and write the new row 1 is equal to 3 of row 1. So that's the first possibility for row operation. The next possibility um, is, again, you take a row, like row 1, and you add or subtract a multiple of another row. So something like row 1 take 2 of row 3. And again, some people write it like this, and some people write it like this. And I like to add this here to remind myself that on the right-hand side, it's the old rows, and then that produces a new row 1. And then the last row operation is to swap row 1 and row 2, or row 2 and row 3, or something like that. It's for swapping rows. So swap 
row 1 and row 2. Now some people like to write this like this, they like to write something like that with arrows, row 1 swaps is row 2. Some people like to write row 1, row 2 is equal to row 2, row 1 like that and um, I tend to like to write it like that too but with a new to remind myself that the new row 1 and row 2 is the old row 2 and row 1. Okay so they're my possibilities and let me just think about what they do to my matrix. The first one there, this one here, that one only changes one row. In this case it changes row 1. This one here again only changes one row. It only changes row 1 um, and it adds or subtracts another row from it. And this one here changes two rows. It swaps them. It doesn't change the values in them but it certainly your two new rows will look different. So that should give me some hints in order to figure out how to solve this problem. Right, so what's my row operation going to be? Well, let's have a look at my matrix. When I wrote it down, I did notice that um, row 1 of A was the same as row 1 of B. And also row 2 of A was the same as row 2 of B. And so the only row that changed is the last row, so row 3. So my row operation is definitely going to be something along the lines of new row 3 is equal to something. Well let's just see if it was going to be um, multiplication I'd have to turn this 2 into this 1 so I'd have to multiply by a half so if it was going to be multiplication it would be a half of row 3. Let's just check to see if that actually works. These are the rows we're interested in. Okay. So two divided by one divided, two divided by two is one. Minus eight times a half is minus four. Four times a half is two. Ten times a half is five. Excellent. It works. Now all I need to do is figure out the inverse. Well the inverse operation is supposed to be going from the matrix at the bottom to the matrix at the top. To go down we replaced our row 3 with a half of the row 3 that was there. To go up, well by rights we should multiply by 2 and if you look at it that's what's going to happen. So if to go up we would do this row operation. My new row 3 would be 2 times my old row 3 going upwards. So that one's not bad. Now let's do uh, part B. So B. Again I want to go from my augmented matrix A. So 3 minus 8, 11, 0. Minus 1, 0, 8, 1. 2 minus 8, 4, 10. And this time the resulting matrix is minus 1, 0, 8, 1, 3, minus 8, 11, 0, and 2, minus 8, 4, 10. Well, you probably noticed what I noticed as I was writing them down that row 2, the new row 2, is the same as the old row 1. See, there's the row 1 of A, and look, here it is in B. And here's um, row 2 of A, and here it is in B. So we've swapped rows. So that would be my new row 1, and row 2 is my old row 2 and row 1. And of course to undo that, to do the inverse, 
all we would need to do would be to swap them again because that would undo a swap would be to swap it again so inverse would be my new row 1 and row 2 is my old row 2 and row 1 well that one was easy so now let's do the next so in part C again my matrix A is the same 3 minus 8 11 0 minus 1 0 8 1 2 minus 8 4 10 and I want to turn that into 1 minus 8 27 2 minus 1 0 8 1 2 minus 8 4 10 well let's have a look at the rows and whether they've changed row 1 um, has changed dramatically row 2 hasn't changed and row 3 hasn't changed so we must have it must be something along the lines of new row 1 equals alright where well one option is to do multiplication if it really is multiplication then this 3 would have to turn into a 1 so it would have to be a third of row 1 that's what it would have to be if it was multiplication let's check to see if that works a third of minus 8 is not minus 8 so it's not multiplication so we'll rub this out and since it's not multiplication that must mean that it's row 1 plus or minus some other row or some multiple of some other row so we want to get from a 3 to a 1 well let's see if we used this row we would have to go 3 minus 2 would be minus 1 let's see if uh, that works so 3 so it would have to be row 1 minus uh, row 3 that's what we'd have to do because we'd have to do 3 minus 2 is 1 so 8 minus 8 should be 0 uh, and it's that's not the answer so uh, that doesn't work either so if we're going to use anything it's going to have to be uh, row 2 actually so let's have a look at what would happen if we used row 2 so 3 minus 1 so we'd have to actually subtract 2 to get to here so that would be plus 2 of row 2 let's see if that works 3 plus 2 of minus 1 is minus 1 8 plus 2 times 0 is sorry minus 8 plus 2 times 0 is minus 8 11 plus 2 times 8 would be 11 plus 16 which is 27 and 0 plus 2 times 1 is 2 so it does work so that's the row operation that goes from A to B now all we need is the inverse row operation well again we've only changed row 1 and it wasn't a multiple so we can't just do the opposite of that so it's going to be another one of these um, adding or subtracting a multiple of another row and if you think about it if we shift all of this down here since we're going upwards row 2 in matrix B is the same as row 2 in matrix A and all we need to do to get to 3 would be to take off two lots of minus 1 to go from 1 to 3 so the inverse would be minus 2 of row 2 
So the original operation was row 1 plus 2 of row 2 and the new uh, inverse operation is row 1 minus 2 of row 2. And that should do it.